Hi, welcome everyone to our desk.com webinar. We've got a few special guest speakers here on the panel with me today, and I'm so excited to have them. Today's topic is all around the phone channel. We're going to give you five tips for making phone support very easy. And along the way, we'll make sure we share some industry examples, unpack the common challenges that most companies are having, and provide all of you with solid key takeaways to make starting up a phone channel hopefully less scary than it sounds. Even though this is a webinar, we want you to interact with us directly. Feel free to connect with us via our social channels. This program is live and we will open the floor up for some Q&A during the last five minutes of the show. We have about 25 minutes worth of content prepared for you and we want to save the last five minutes for Q&A to give you a chance to answer, to give you a chance to ask some of the questions that um, you would like to ask our panelists. So be sure to enter any questions you have during the webinar in the GoToWebinar chat panel. Lastly, we know that you're all busy people, so if you have to drop off, that's not a problem at all. This webinar will be recorded, as does most of our webin as does all of our webinars, actually, and we will send you the recording after the webinar. We'll also post this on our YouTube channel. So to start, do you think customers expect even small businesses to provide a 1-800 number for support? You bet they do. Some industries like retail and e-commerce or more B2C businesses require a phone channel to be part of their multi-channel mix. So think about um, when you're buying a pair of shoes online or what about Herschel's backpack? Those are some of the types of businesses where consumers are expecting to talk to someone live if they're encountering an issue. But if you're not in the business where you have many, many customers reaching out to you via the phone, it's very easy for you as a smaller and medium sized business to stay away from offering phone support. The truth is there are actually a lot of great technology solutions out there that can help you provide phone support. That is not overly expensive. And a lot of those technology are cloud based. So it's really easy to get set up. When I think of uh, the phone channel, I immediately think of large call center systems or ones that are very hard to get set up. Think legacy on-premise solutions. Well, that's not the case. That's why today we're here to discuss some of these solutions so we can demystify some common misconceptions that SMBs may have about adding phone as part of their support mix and how you can make this a reality for your small business too. And meet our experts. So you have myself, Kira Cho. I'm on the product marketing team and I'll be hosting this webinar. There's no better way for me to kick this off than to invite my friends on this panel with me. We've got Monica from New Voice Media, Sophie and Eric from Customer Service Lab. They're all very seasoned professional that provide a lot of expertise around any issues that has to do with support. Monica has over 15 years of professional experience in leading global product marketing and business development teams globally. And today, Monica works very closely with a lot of our Salesforce customers to help them maximize their Salesforce investment. And they all go to her if they are looking to find an integrated cloud solution-based contact center strategy. Sophie and Eric are also very are also very seasoned and experts in this space. Sophie and Eric have worked with tons of startups, a lot of small businesses, and really helping all of them figure out what their customer service strategy should be and help them provide a roadmap and really help them get up and running. So the way we've broken out this conversation today is by providing all of you five tips on how we can make the phone support really easy. So now, tip number one. Don't be afraid to launch in phases and wait for the right timing to launch the phone channel. So this question is really to Eric. Typically for startups or small businesses, when do you think is the right time for them to start adding the phone channel to their support mix? Um, thanks, Gary. I think this is a, a really important question, and I think it's one that you know sometimes we overlook. Um, but first, I think it's, it's important to understand what your customers need um, and want. If you're a new company or a startup, you may not need to offer phone support immediately. It really depends on a number of factors. The type of product or service you're offering, um, does it demand a live channel? 
um, as your as well as your business model, your staffing, your budget, uh, and even office space. We talk to plenty of small startups who really just don't even have the room to have uh, people on the phones. Uh, many startups or or SMBs uh, start with email, self service, and social. Uh, and then add live channels like phone or chat later on when demand comes up. Um, oftentimes, you'll know when it's time to add phone support because your customers will tell you. Um, you can even survey them on their preferred method of contacting you for help. We really recommend this, for example, if a company has a, a new product with beta testing or is in a pre-order mode, um, it's a great time to survey them. Great, and I know you. we've worked with a lot of startups before and small businesses. Do you have any specific examples you can show us? Yeah, I'm a big fan of this phased approach to expanding support channels. Um, it allows you to plan and execute implementation a lot more effectively. Um, so for example, at one company I worked at, we were doing uh, email ticketing support. Plus, of course, we had a help center, but we knew we wanted to launch a live channel. And yes, our customers were telling us they wanted us to call, uh, they wanted to call. Um, so we weren't sure what kind of phone volume we would have, and I knew from experience in, in running support teams and contact centers that we really needed to staff it appropriately. So meeting expectations around accessibility is super important with phone support. So what we decided to do was test demand for the phone uh, by offering voicemail to select customers. So the company I was working with uh, was really big on A-B testing. So we were able to sell this approach very easily to internal stakeholders as proof of concept and get some engineering resources assigned to it. Um, so once we had voicemail up, um, I was able to look at incoming call reports and assess how many people and what hours I needed to staff phones to meet demand. For example, I could look at uh, day of week volume and hour of day. Then I was able to hire and train the right number of people, and we expanded to live phone support. So I'm so glad we did this in phases because phone support exploded and soon became by far our number one channel. Nice. Tip number two, let's be thorough and look at different phone solutions before you choose the one that best fits your need. So now the easy part's over. Do you need a phone channel? Yes, you do. So Sophie, when looking at different phone selections, which one do you think um, people should look at? Are there different uh, things that they have to go through when looking at different options? Yep. So like you just mentioned, Kara, there's a lot of different solutions out there. Um, and just to name a few, obviously we have New Voice Media, who's here today. Uh, but there's also uh, players like Ring Central, Twilio, Talkdesk, Five9, 8x8, Genesis, and more. So the list is pretty long. Uh, this is why it's important that uh, you take the time to gather your requirements. I'm not talking about a huge RFP, but it's really taking the time to just list all your, your requirements, the main features and functionality you need. And don't forget to include other teams like marketing or your developers, even finance or product people who might also use the same solution and who might have uh, other requirements to add on your list. Be thorough and schedule demos, super important, and be sure to look at more than one. That way you can really compare. Um, ask your team to look at uh, the UX of the solution, especially if there's an integration with your ticketing system. And uh, your agents will tell you right away if it's going to be easy to use or not, and if they like it or not. Very important to keep your agents happy. And Monica, what are some of the common requirements that companies look for when evaluating different telephony partners uh, when they're looking to deploy a phone channel? Yeah, I know, and a lot of them are right along the lines of what Sophie just covered, but one of the first areas that we typically run to, probably because we are true cloud, is the requirements of cloud, or really looking at the advantages of having a cloud contact center solution, because one of the big advantages is you're ensuring typically greater availability of your contact center, um, and putting less resource requirements on what might be an already limited IT or operations team um, as it is today. And then overall, with the cloud, it really gives you greater flexibility from scaling regionally to really looking at how you want to modify things or customize things really on the fly, 
but it, it is not very resource intensive to do that. So I would say that's one of the first areas that we really see from, from our customers. But then it really get, dives a lot into a lot of what Sophie was highlighting, which is the functionality and kind of how it's delivered. So um, I, I, I threw uh, some screenshots here for you, kind of looking at some of the, the some examples of this. So kind of one of the first areas is making sure that that solution is actually embedded into your desk.com solution. So it becomes very easy from an agent perspective in terms of managing their ticketing and their cases. They can see everything from their, um, you know, the, the screen pop that comes in, how to handle cases, they know exactly who's calling in, and the, the information around the customer is all right there within their desk.com console. Yeah, and actually, um, Monica, we also, that's a good segue because that was actually, uh, we have a list of the requirements here, uh, but you can keep talking through it. This is the, the what the screen pop will look like. And then I think. Perfect, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so kind of like from the ab ability to kind of, you've got this embedded um, ticketing management here, which enables you to um, easily do whether there's an inbound call, you get the screen pop, which you can show the next slide, which shows you the actual kind of screen pop. You can take notes and build a case around that individual calling in. Um, or, uh, once again, customer service is all about being proactive as well, too, and following up with, with individuals around questioning. You want to make sure that you have that, what I would call click-to-dial capabilities. So instead of having your agents have a, a separate phone system and having to dial, when they click to dial inside the desk.com record, for example, they have the capabilities to be able to, you're now logging that, um, both on the inbound and on the outbound side, which is going to help you, which I'll get to in a little bit, around your statistics and insights that you're gonna have as management. So from a usability perspective, we really see kind of the, the screen pop uh, on the inbound side and the click to dial for your outbound dialing being very valuable. The, the other area that we see that many customers are also looking at is a lot around the routing calls um, based off of groups or product types, et cetera. So think about incoming calls. You, you many times don't want them to go all to the same group of individuals. You want to set up um, a system in place where you understand service calls can go to a service group product type inquiries can go to the best product type individuals, um, and making sure all of that is happening on the back end effectively. One, this helps your customers have a more personalized experience, but once again, it helps your agents as well because they're getting the types of calls that are applicable to them and they're best skilled to handle those types of calls. Um, one thing we've also seen is not just routing the calls to the right individuals, but one other thing that we've seen um, that's also been very helpful for uh, new companies to telephony is the capability to actually route voicemail to groups of people. So as you're setting up your telephony infrastructure, and, and Sophie and Eric, they may have covered this a little bit earlier, but or they're covering it later, one of the areas that you find is you're, you're trying to figure out what your call volumes are. You're, you're assessing those areas, and there are going to be peak times. And one of the things you may want to offer, which really helps with that personalized engagement, is, you know, leave a voicemail if the whole time is going to be too long. Well, you want that voicemail not to just to go into, a, you know, a pit that never gets answered. You want that still to be prioritized for your service teams to follow up with. So think about not even just routing your inbound calls, but then potentially if you have voicemails that are left or even you know, after work hours voicemails that are left, making sure that those go into a queue for the right individuals to then follow up with. So those are kind of some of the key areas we see um, as you look at, you know, some of the features that really help both the customers and the agents. And then if you move forward, I think kind of the last two areas that we really see our uh, customers really valuing is then the management insights that you're going to get with an integrated contact center and telephony solution with desk.com is the fact that now you're going to have visibility and be able to make smarter decisions on how many calls are you getting? Do you need to hire more agents? 
Um, or do you just need to balance where the calls are going? What type of calls are you getting? Um, and, and really ba balancing that caseload as you start to grow. And this obviously is something that hopefully starts on the smaller side and, and you have some time to scale, but we provide those visibil that visibility so that you can actually see those statistics and are investing in the right areas aligned to the, to the growth of your company. So, you know, those are some of the key areas that I've seen our customers really look for and really value what their, for their needs around telephony integration. I would say kind of one of the final areas that really does stand out, and this isn't for everybody, but one of the final areas is understanding and, and assessing what your growth plan is for the future. So investing in a telephony solution that can ensure that if you plan to grow globally, for example, do they have telephony requirements that can scale into other regions and other parts of the world? Because ideally you don't want to have siloed solutions or approaches there. Um, the other area is also, you know, even scaling your customer service strategy. So at a point where you may want at one time, at a, at a future date, to grow from, say, Dust.com into a larger service cloud infrastructure, is your telephony investment able to scale with you going from the size you have today into mid-market and then maybe on to the large enterprise? Um, and is that a solution that can grow with you as well? So those are, I think, you know, going from all the way from cloud to individual features to global growth and scale are some of the big buckets that we see our customers uh, and, and prospects kind of auditing and, and looking at that we've helped them with. Thanks, Monica. I think Does that, that give you a good... Yeah, no, I think that's a great list. Right. We'll definitely send it out. I'll um, follow up with a blog post and really dive into each of those requirements so that you on the phone, you can also um, check that out in writing after this. <laughs> so I know... Um, you know, the, the ticketing system is really the backbone of your customer service ecosystem, and phone is just one of the channels. So, Sophie, can you tell us a little bit about um, how you can connect phone to the rest of your ticketing ecosystem? Yeah. So like you just said, Kara, it's super, the ticketing system is a backbone of uh, your support group, and it's where your agents are going to spend most of the time. It's where all the customer's history is, is. Uh, so it's super important to be able to integrate also all phone contacts into uh, your ticketing system, like other channels like chat and you name it. Um, and what are the benefits of integrations like that? What are you going to gain? So first, it's definitely going to be an increase in agent productivity because integrations mean that your agents won't have to switch from one screen to another one, won't have to do some cut and paste, uh, with our notes to have everything into the ticketing systems. Everything is just going to be into one screen, like Monica showed earlier. So increasing productivity. Uh, also, your agents are going to be happier because they're going to be less frustrated about manual processes. Um, faster resolution of issues because your agents are going to have an immediate view of your customer's history. So they are more informed and can solve the problem more quickly. Super important. Um, also, another consequence of that is that your agents are going to be able to provide a more personalized response because, again, they have all the history available to them. Um, and more importantly, they're going to have more time to focus on um, customers' needs which results in you know, customer satisfaction, increased customer satisfaction, and increase in your agent satisfaction also. Uh, and like Monica mentioned also, uh, an integration with your ticketing system is also going to allow you a much better reporting because you're going to be able to categorize your phone contacts with the same categorization than your, than your tickets. So you're going to be able to report holistically about your contacts. Very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you bring up a really good point, Sophie, is that we're providing our agents the tools so that they can work really effectively. And when we're talking about all this technology, it might be a little over our heads, but at the end of the day, we're just trying to make it easier for our agents. And agents aren't humans. They're um, 
you know, they have the personality and persona. So let's talk a little bit about staffing. Eric, how do you think companies should think about staffing when it comes to adding a phone? Yeah, I think this is a, a really important topic and is often overlooked when you get into the uh, the mode of implementing a tool and, and you do forget about the people sometimes. Um, so if, if phone is your first live or real time channel, there's a few things I think you need to consider. Your hours of operation, because if you publish a phone number, you need to tell people when they can call it. Um, the increased number of people you'll need to cover these hours. We've talked a little bit about that uh, already. Hiring and ramp up time, um, if you need to hire new agents. Uh, and also skills. Um, oftentimes, agents, in my experience, who are really speedy on email, not, might not be as adept at handling phone calls. Uh, so you might need to hire a slightly different profile for this new skill. And especially if you've only done email up to this point. Um, also keep in mind that switching to live support or schedules uh, for the first time might have an impact on your team culture and daily work and even your overall company culture. So suddenly think about it, people who have had very flexible arrival times or come and go as they please um, will now be responsible for adhering to a schedule and covering phone calls at designated hours. Um, and this doesn't sound like a big deal, but believe me, it's a really big deal. <laughs> um, so if your team, for example, is the only one in the company that has scheduled work hours, this can lead to some dissatisfaction or frustration. And my advice is really to communicate, communicate, communicate about the changes, the timeline, and especially the benefit to customers. Um, I can't stress enough the need to pay attention to change management when you're launching a live channel like phones. And what are some of the advice that you can give to optimize a staffing plan? Um, sure. So first, like I talked about earlier, um, pay attention to your incoming call pattern. Monica uh, mentioned this as well. It's going to tell you if you have day of week changes or hour of day. Um, in my experience, those are slightly different for phones than email. Um, also, in, in terms of flexibility, when you have multiple support channels, for example, email, phone, social, and perhaps chat, um, you have greater flexibility in assigning work. You can rotate assignment uh, between agents that help build skills and also keep their day-to-day -day work more interesting. Um, and as your team scales, if you have remote workers or an outsource vendor to support, uh, supplement an in-house team, you can think about ways to configure like a tier one, tier two configuration, uh, a phone team versus an email team or billing versus tech support. Um, and finally, as you scale and add channels and such, don't forget about your original or longtime employees. Um, without guidance, in my experience, many early stage startup employees often get lost or frustrated as your team and culture, uh, company culture changes uh, with growth. Great. So now that we've talked about how the phone channel impacts your overall support organization, um, also, we talked about how to operationalize it. And then lastly, we also talked about the people part of things. The last missing piece is really how do you make this as easy to use as possible for your customers? And I think, Sophie, you have a lot of experience in giving that guidance to a lot of different startups and small businesses. So how do we do it? Yeah. So uh, just a quick side, side note. So we just hosted our third CS Lab workshop uh, a few weeks ago with a lot of executives and startups. And uh, one of the biggest trends that we discussed was um, um, offering an effortless experience uh, to customers. And it's a big trend in customer service for 2015. So basically, how do we make it easy for customers to get their questions answered? So with phone, it's super important. So one thing is keep a simple IVR. So the IVR is going to be the system that allows you to present options to customers. So if you have a laundry list of 15 options, nobody, I mean, you're going to have people just um, hanging up the phone. Uh, so we recommend to keep it uh, up to three, even five sometimes is way too long. Um, Limit your whole time and uh, try to play nice music or even a fun story uh, so that actually your people want to stay on hold. <laughs> um, offer customers to leave a message if they don't want to hold. Um, and also, you know, a big part of it is where you're going to display your toll free number uh, and think about uh, your customer experience. So. Uh, display it on relevant pages like checkout uh, 
or uh, specific support pages, uh, not only just on the contact us page. And also, you know, uh, depending on the type of business uh, uh, you're running, you may want to display your number based on customer's login. For example, you may have paid and non-paid customers. So obviously, you may want to just display your uh, toll-free number to your paid customers. Um, so just an idea. Great. So I think you guys all did. I was just going to add one other. I was just going to add one more thing to that too. Is um, when you have your phone line as well too now available in your telephony integration, kind of building on what Sophie just said. 